Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here, and welcome back to another video. So back in 2016, I uploaded a video on how you can record your PC screen for free, and that has like a million views right now as I'm recording this video. So I thought I'd make a new version of it just because the new year is just a few weeks away, and the old one just needed to get an update in general. If you do want to record your PC screen for maybe like a presentation you have to make, or really if you want to start making gaming videos or anything like that, this video is going to be perfect for you. And also, if this video doesn't help helping you guys out at all, then please do hit that like button. That's literally all I asked because that last video got like 24,000 likes. So if you couldn't get that much support again, that'd be amazing. But than that, let's get on with the video. So anyways, the first thing that I want to do is talk about the software that we're actually going to be using to record our PC screen. And for this video, we'll be using Streamlabs OBS, which is a much better version of the software that I used in my last video with like a million views from three years ago, which is kind of crazy still. But anyways, this software works great on old PCs and new PCs, and it's also whatever I use whenever I'm streaming and recording for YouTube. Anyways, for everyone who just hasn't installed the software yet, if you guys could install it using my custom link in the description below, I would appreciate it a ton because most YouTubers just probably wouldn't tell you this, but every time someone installs the software using my custom link from the description below, Streamlabs will pay me a dollar, and trust me, it's all good if you don't want to use my link or if you want to use someone else's, or even just the normal link, but I did want to throw that out there before the video does go on. Anyways, when you're on the website, you should see a page pretty similar to this one right here, and all you have to do is just click the download Streamlabs OBS button, and when you do that, it will ask you where you want to save it, or it might just automatically get installed to your downloads folder. But what we're going to do is save it to my desktop because it really doesn't matter where you save it because you're just going to end up deleting the installation file anyways. It's really not that needed. Anyways, once the download is done, just go ahead and open it up by clicking down here or opening it from your downloads folder. And then from there, click yes if you get a window like that one right there. From there, go ahead and hit I agree and then leave the installation directory the same as it is. From there, hit install and you should be good to go. So once that finishes up, make sure that you do have the Run Streamlabs OBS button checked and then go ahead and hit finish because this will just cause the application to open up right away and obviously it's just going to make the video go by quicker. Also, one thing I do want to mention is if you guys end up having any questions about OBS at all, be sure to comment them down in the comment section below so that I can respond to you guys and help you guys out or even feel free to like tweet me on Twitter or follow me on Twitter and then DM me and I'll do my best to help you guys out. I've been doing it for years and I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can. Anyways, if you get a window of Streamlabs uh, kind of like this one right here, you don't really have to sign in if you don't want to. This is mainly for if if you plan on like streaming to any of these services like Twitch, YouTube and things like that, but I personally do sign in whenever I use this software, but since we're just doing a tutorial on how to record your screen, let's just go ahead and hit the setup later button. And then if you get a video or if you get not a video, but if you get a window like this one right here, just go ahead and hit start fresh because it just makes everything like way easier. Also, if at like any point throughout this video, you guys get like a window of Streamlabs saying that it needs more permission for like network access or something like that, just go ahead and hit allow access and that's just gonna like set you up in case you do ever wanna stream in the future. But anyways, moving on from all that, we're finally in the software. So this black screen right here is normally where you would see like your webcam or your desktop or whatever you're recording at the time. So since we have nothing there right now, let's go ahead and actually start recording something. So what we wanna do to actually bring our computer screen onto the like where the black screen is right now is go to where it says sources, click the plus button right here, and then from there look for display capture. Once you click that, Go ahead and hit add source and you can rename it if you do want to. I'm just going to keep it the same as it is, but something you might want to do is maybe like first monitor or second monitor, third monitor, whatever, depending on how many sources you do end up adding. But since we're just doing one, just go ahead and add source. And from here, you might get a window like this one right here. And if you click this, you should see multiple options only if you have multiple monitors. If you only have one monitor, then you're only going to see display zero, I believe. But since I have two monitors, I do have display zero and I have display one. And since I only want to record my main monitor, all I'm just going to do is click on display zero. And I am going to capture my cursor because I do want the people watching my video to be to be able to see like where my cursor is. From there, go ahead, click done, and you should be good to go. And you'll know you did it right because now you should be able to see like your desktop like in the window and you should be able to like see it in like a weird little inception type of thing. But anyways, if you make the OBS window bigger, it will give you more room to work with in case that's something you're interested in. You can also resize the window that you did add as a source by just going to the bottom. Or you can just click on the source, make sure it gets highlighted around the corners. Then you can just kind of like resize it however you want move it around if you want to. I'm just going to obviously leave it where it was supposed to be because we're trying to record a screen in like proper dimensions. But anyways, let's continue on with the video. So the next step before we actually go into the settings is the night mode and light mode switcher. And what this is, is you just go up here and you click this, you'll change your stream to like light mode. If you click it again, it can go to night mode. It's really personal preference for whatever you like, but I just want to make sure I showed you guys that before we go into the settings, which is right here. So we click the settings gear right there and it should open up a new window like this one right here. Now I'm going to quickly make the normal Streamlabs window smaller again because I actually personally like it like that, but it's all just going to be personal preference for whatever you end up liking. So you don't have to make yours like smaller just because I did that. But anyways, now that we're here, let's move on straight away to the output tab right here. And the reason why we did that is because this is where we can play with some of our recording settings. And the first thing that I want you guys to do right away is that make sure that your output mode is on the simple one instead of the advanced one that you can switch to. And we're doing that because it works about the same, but we can avoid getting people confused with like having too many settings in front of them. From there, since we're only recording, all you have to do is just go ahead and minimize the streaming like box. You really don't need it. We only need to mess with the recording one and that's it. 
So anyways, let's finally get on with the recording settings part of this video. And the first thing that I want you guys to change is change your recording format to MP4 from FLV, which should be your default one. And the reason why I'm having you guys do that is because it makes it easier to edit your files and other programs without like compatibility issues and things like that. But if you yourself know that you definitely need to be using one of the other file types for whatever project that you're working on, then by all means go for it. But for most of us, MP4 is going to be the way to go. Now, the next thing that we want to do is change our recording path. And this is where we pick where we want all of our recorded files to go after we're done recording them on OBS. So if I was to make a new folder on my desktop right here, just go to new, hit folder, and I'm just going to like leave it named new folder because I really don't care. Then we can go to the recording path, hit browse, go to my desktop and look for the new folder. So it's right here. I'm going to hit select folder and the path should have gotten changed to this folder right here. So now that we've actually changed that recording path right here to that folder, all the videos that I do end up recording on Streamlabs OBS will get saved in there unless I do end up changing that setting later in the future. Anyways, the next thing I want to mention is something that's not out yet, but I'm just saying it for future reference because I'm pretty positive that Streamlabs is going to end up adding the setting. But if they ever do end up adding a recording quality or an encoder setting like this one right here, but like in the recording area over here, what you should do if you have like a normal computer or like a lower end PC is go ahead and hit the select or the hit the software x264 option. And what this will do is it will actually record your PC screen by encoding through your processor. The only issue is that it might slow down your PC a bit, but that's just how it has to go if you have an older end PC. But if you have like a newer end PC that has like an NVIDIA graphics card, then I highly recommend using the NVENC option because then it will actually use your graphics card to encode your recording instead. So since that feature isn't out right now, I wouldn't worry about it, but I just wanted to mention it in case you're watching this video like a few months in the future and they finally added it. So anyways, like I just said before, the only reason I mentioned that was just in case I end up do changing up the software like later down the line, the video should still work later in the future. But anyways, let's move on from that and go into the recording quality. So the first thing that we want to change is we don't want to leave it as same as stream because we didn't even set up streaming settings to begin with. So I'm going to run you guys through these settings and you guys can pick whatever you want. I'm almost positive no one is ever going to pick lossless quality because the file sizes are just way too large for that and I don't even know if it's worth it. So what I personally do because I know I have a pretty high end PC is that I use indistinguishable quality. The only downfall with that is that you will get like really good quality but the file size is going to be a bit larger so that's basically like what that means. And so if you have like a lower end PC or an older computer definitely just do the high quality option because that's the best one for you. Don't worry that yours is not going to be the same as me. It's totally okay. But anyways, enough with that. Let's move on to the audio tab. So right here, you're going to see a bunch of options and you're only going to have to really work with two of them. All right, that was kind of weird, but anyways, my recording just cut out for a bit, so I'm sorry about that inconvenience. But anyways, for the audio tab, the first thing that you want to do is change your desktop audio device one to wherever the sound goes to from your computer. So if you're wearing a pair of headset or like a pair of headphones like me, what you want to do is go ahead and select it from this drop down menu right here. I have a pretty weird name for my headset, but that's mainly just because the sound goes to my mix amp before it actually goes to my headset. So that's what I'm going to be picking. But in case you have like Turtle Beaches or Astros or Audio Technicas or whatever, you should see it somewhere in here. So just go ahead and click on that. Or even if you just use your speakers as your default like desktop top audio device, go ahead and select that and you should be good to go. Most people are probably not going to have the same name for this, but the only thing I want you guys to do is just make sure you don't leave it on default. Definitely select it manually. But anyways, from there, we can move on to the mic and auxiliary device. And this is really only important if you plan on actually recording your voice in your videos too. And if you're one of those people who wants to do that, just like me, all you have to do is just click it and actually look for your microphone. And I have no idea why I have two of my own microphones right here. I think the second one is like a glitch or something. But anyways, my microphone is the Blue Yeti stereo microphone. So I'm going to click that. But in case you're using like a different kind of microphone or maybe your headset microphone or whatever, just go ahead and select that from this drop on menu just like i said before we're all not, probably not gonna have the same names for these it's really w just whatever is working with your setup currently select that and you should and you should be good to go from there leave all the other three like disabled so your desktop audio device two unless you actually have one i don't so i'm gonna leave it disabled same with my other like two mics that i could have leaving them disabled and from there we can move on to the video tab oh one thing i do want to mention from the audio tab is that the desktop audio device one the only reason that you actually select this is so that your sound from your computer can actually end up going in your recording so in case you don't want that you can disable it, but most people probably want to be able to show whoever's watching their video like the sounds that they hear at the same time. But anyways, let's go back to the video tab and start off with the base canvas resolution. So personally speaking, I definitely think that you can just leave your base canvas resolution at whatever it defaults to because that's really what your monitor's resolution already is. And it's probably going to be different than mine because I have like a really high end monitor. That's why mine is 2560 x1440. I'm pretty positive most of you guys will have 1920 x1080 and that's totally okay. That's literally like the industry standard anyway. So just like I said before, leave the the base canvas resolution the same as it is but output skill resolution is something that you might want to actually end up changing and the reason i say that is because this is actually where you decide what quality you want your videos to actually be so in case you want to record your videos in like 1080p then what you want to do is click this little drop down menu and look for 1920 by 1080 so you click that and the last 
four digits kind of like signify what quality you're going to be recording in. So you can do that. Or if you want to record in 720p, you can look for 1280x720 or 1280x720. So it's going to try converting it from this one to this one, unless you're going to have like the same one for both of them, then it's not going to have to do all that extra work. So I'm going to change mine back to 1080p and now we can move on to the downscale filter. So also, just like I said before, guys, don't force your settings to be the same as mine. We all have different computers, different monitors and things like that. So if yours are different, then don't worry, just use whatever works with your system. But anyways, on the downscale filter, I highly recommend just using Bicubic if you have like a normal computer or like an older computer. If you have like a high-end computer like me, then I would go ahead and use Lanxos. Anyways, moving on from that, we can leave the FPS type at common FPS values. And then for common FPS values, I highly recommend either picking between 30 or 60. Nothing in between because honestly, it, it's really pointless to do that. Just do 30 or 60. I would recommend 30 if you have like an older PC and 60 if you have a higher end one that can handle recording in 60 FPS. So I'm going to do that. Anyways, guys, from there, you can go ahead and click on the done button right here. And then you can go ahead and click the recording button right here to the left of the go live button and your recording should start up. You'll know that you did start recording because the little button just becomes like fully red. And so this is basically like a test recording. So since I'm recording right now, I can move this around if I want to. I can move it here. I can move it back. Things like that. Obviously, you're probably going to be playing like a game or maybe like showing a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. But anyways, when you are done with your video, you can click the recording button once more to end your recording. And one thing I do want to tell you guys is that in case you're like mic volume is too loud you can like lower it like this and then it's not gonna be as loud in the recording or like the final recording and you can do the same thing for your desktop audio if you do have like music playing or like a gameplay or something like that you can do the same thing from there but anyways since the recording is done it should have technically gotten saved for the new folder that we created earlier on in the video so i can open that up and there it is so that's the new like recording that i just made so if i do open it up you guys should be able to hear what i was just saying like 10 seconds ago so let's just quickly open it up and hit play you'll know that you did start so since i'm like, things like that obviously you're probably gonna be playing like a game or maybe like showing a Alright, I don't like hearing myself talk. But anyways, guys, uh, that's really it for the video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, all I ask is that you hit the like button. And if you're feeling like extra generous, then please subscribe after if you are new to the channel. Also, if you're one of the people who used my Streamlabs link from the description below, then please comment below saying it or tweet me saying that you did it so that I can thank you personally. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and be on the lookout in the description below for when I add a best recording settings version of this video and best streaming settings version of this video. But anyways, guys, other than that, I think that's it. That's all I want to say. Happy holidays and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.